a man or a woman. Pastor closes prayer with woke ignorance. And Lecrae disappoints Christians yet again. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Now, there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds, not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin, and there are those who are dead to sin. After three nights of unbridled lawlessness across London, the contagion is spreading. The problem is that God has already judged this. He has judged murder already. I don't need to question it. I don't need to ask and wonder what his plan is. We're commanded as Christians not to participate in the works of darkness, but expose them. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about some really crazy stuff. And I got to be honest with you, a lot of this stuff ends up being political, but... When we talk about God being used as a political ploy, when we see him, uh, God and his character not only be smirched, but also when you see what we can only consider, I guess, woke theologians or those who think they are, but really they're asleep. And uh, we're going to be talking about these subjects because they are important. I, I have to just be honest with you. When it comes to politics, some of it is so nonsensical uh, what, that what people believe and what they tie themselves to. And it's kind of incredible how often someone is completely enamored by a candidate or by a, a political party or so forth. But I think it's really important when we see absolute nonsense coming out of not only those who would proclaim themselves to be Christians, but seeing things happen on the Congress floor, seeing things happen out in the public square, I think we need to be able to speak to it and then take it captive to the obedience of Christ. And I think that's what our job is here at Good Fight Ministries, especially when it comes to 511 News. And what we're trying to do here with the show is say, these are the things that everyone's hearing about. These are the things that you're at work, you're at school, you're on Zoom, whatever it is, and you want to have to you want to be able to speak to what's going on in the culture because somebody's going to ask you i bet or somebody that is highly ignorant on a subject may ask you something along the lines of well why does it say a men and not a woman why is everything about men in the bible even though we obviously know that under the new covenant we recognize very clearly uh, when it comes to salvation that there is neither Jew nor Greek, and there's neither male nor female when it comes to knowing Christ and knowing our Savior, loving Him. And the fact is, is that we have that, and it's amazing that we have that in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so it's cool to be able to talk about these things with you guys and go through this because many people have, might not have heard, <laughs> I hope by now you've probably heard, that Missouri Democratic Representative Emmanuel Cleaver, who's also a Kansas City Methodist pastor. Man, I just think about Methodist pastors and I think about Methodism and where it's gone today. Now, there are a number of those in the Methodist movement still that call themselves confessional Methodists that would not agree with obviously this or a number of things. In fact, one of the biggest thing one of the biggest things that's happening right now is the Methodist church is debating right now and there is somewhat of a split between those who would accept homosexual marriage and those who would not. And but the Methodist movement, sadly, uh, much like much of the Presbyterian movement as well, um, has gone completely astray. I know the Lutheran Church here locally also um, has a rainbow flag out in front of it, and so they've totally thrown away what the Word of God truly says. They do not care, and what they've done is built an idol for themselves, and they come along these these lines of congregational lines and and so forth and denominational lines. And say, yeah, we're a part of this, but it's fully, you know, okay to accept these things. Where I imagine I have plenty of disagreements with not only Martin Luther, but also with John Calvin concerning Presbyterianism uh, and Luther in terms of Lutheranism, and then you know, obviously even with John Wesley, who I I do agree with him much more than most. I have disagreements as well. But nonetheless, all of these men would probably throw up and and want to burn down the buildings that are now, uh, you know, accustomed to their name or have been placed as part of their own service. And it's pretty sad when you look back at that and when you see what it's become. I know the 
uh, Cal Lutheran University here uh, at Thousand Oaks, which is only about maybe 10 minutes from where we're recording this right now, that that is a liberal haven for nonsense. I mean, it really is. One of the elders here at our church, Nick Paneri, he actually graduated from there. And they actually, I believe they had Dan Barker, the head of the, um, the you know, basically the atheist, you know, head of the apostate Dan Barker and so forth, you know, who is one of the most embarrassing debates I've ever watched is one between him and um, and Dr. James White when he asked Dr. James White in a debate to stop quoting the book that he had written that he was selling at the debate and he was called out for that and funny enough when pastor joe schimmel debated dr doug stoffer the same exact thing happened in that debate in which the person who was selling the books out front of the conference at their table was also saying i no longer believe the things that i wrote in there so he's literally peddling things that aren't even true and they know they aren't true but nonetheless i digress because what took place on the congress floor was nonsensical. Uh, it was ridiculous, and I want to I want to bring forth the seriousness of it. I mean, there is a point of contention, and just in terms of it being ridiculous, you know, it being absurd that this would even happen. Um, but I think there also needs to be a seriousness when it comes to how we view prayer, because I've looked at the apologetic or so forth that Mr. Cleaver has given. And it is still absolutely blasphemous what he did on the Congress floor. So instead of me explaining it to you, I'm actually going to play the clip right now. I'll have Tony play the clip. So let's play the clip, Tony. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. So not only what do you have there, this monotheistic god of Brahma, one of the many gods in Hinduism, but nonetheless, this idea that you simply just pray to the pantheon of gods. Imagine if you go to Mars Hill with Paul, and Mr. Cleaver was standing alongside of of Paul as he's at Mars Hill looking at the pantheon of gods, and he's like, no, you know what? Yeah, they're all, we're all just monotheistic. It's all just one god. Everything's just okay. This is pathetic. And in all honesty, these prayers are an abomination to the one true God. This prayer, before we even get into the ridiculousness of woke evangelicalism, what the problem is here is that you have a pagan. That man is a pagan. Those prayers are an abomination to God. And it's absolutely grotesque and disgusting that this is somebody who is called a shepherd. The blind lead the blind into a ditch. And that is what whoever would attend this guy's church, I hope that at this point you say, I want out. Please, if you attend Emmanuel Cleaver's church or if you follow him ideologically in any way, run for the hills. Get away from that. Don't walk to the exit. Run to the exit. Now, I'm sure he's probably closed anyways, but nonetheless, guys, these are not true shepherds, and we need to be much more careful as we watch our walk, okay? We need to be much more careful about the people that we've ingratiated ourselves with. We need to be much more careful about the people that we are listening to, who is training us and teaching us, who are we meditating on, who are we hearing from. Let's first and foremost, there should not be a close second. First and foremost, we need to be inundated by the word of God. You know, I hope you guys, you know, you guys are into the new year here and hopefully you've set out some sort of plan. Like, hey, I want to do something a little different this year. And and there's nothing wrong with new beginnings and and saying, hey, I want to start something new. Uh, You know, God had the year of Jubilee and different things that he would put forth based on the calendar as well. And so I think there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, we're at a new year. What I want to do is make sure that I'm reading the Word of God more. I'm praying more. I'm witnessing to this person. I had probably mentioned this, but in my discipleship group, we've set out different goals, each person to say, hey, what is your spiritual goal for the next year? What do you want to accomplish spiritually? Some people want to plant churches. Some guys are going to be going to the mission field this uh, this coming year. One guy said, hey, I just want to make sure that I'm getting in an hour of prayer 
and the Word of God each day. Another one said, "Hey, I want to finish my, um, you know, seminary courses that I'm taking. Um, you know, I want to, I want to see my, I want to see my dad saved this year. I want to see my dad saved. I want to witness to him, and I want to, I want the Lord to know him, and I'm going to put a lot of effort towards that. And so, these are things that we can do. But first and foremost, what I said is, what you need to do is set out some sort of plan. And so, maybe you're somebody who's like, I'm going to read the whole Bible this year, and maybe you're on the it's you know fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth day, and you're like, ah man, I, I messed up. Dude, put in the extra work, all right? Go back to work, get after it. I, I can tell you this, I'm doing, um, I want to read the Bible four times, uh, so once every 90 days. So I've set out somewhat of a reading plan for 90 days. It's only about 17, 16, 17 chapters or so a day. It's really, really simplistic, very easy um, in terms of when you separate your time and you, you make sure those things that are important. And I think when it comes to anything, if we better have the Word of God embedded in us, it's much more difficult for any virus to come in. It's much more difficult for this nonsense to come in. And when you hear it, you'll be able to answer it. That's one thing about writing God's Word in your heart is that you will be able to answer when silly nonsense comes up like this. When somebody goes up there, and not only the pantheistic or not pantheistic, this paganistic prayer that he did to all these other gods, okay, not only will you be able to answer that and why it's wrong to maybe your coworker, your friend, your family member, but also, guys, you'll be able to answer why we don't say a man or a woman and why this is the most, the weirdest thing. Like, I, I literally was like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you that you would say a man and a woman? I saw Tony snarking over there. Uh, uh, and, and I'm like, I'm listening to this. I'm watching this. I'm like, that's not real. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's real. And he's like, oh, people are taking it out of context to sow division. No, when you were going before the throne of God, and by the way, when it comes to us meeting and having a mediator, it's Jesus Christ who is the mediator. It's Jesus Christ whose flesh was tore. It's Jesus Christ who tore the veil so that we can go directly to God and speak with him and have communion one with another. And you use that time to push forth some nonsense as if a man and a woman, even if you were joking, it's blasphemous. Even if you were joking, it is blasphemous. People put their hands on the Ark of of the Covenant and were dead. It is serious to be blasphemous when you are going before the Lord. When it comes to communion, I think about this a lot. You have people that will come and just take communion like it's nothing. That's dangerous. That is dangerous. God killed people for that. We need to be really serious about how we go to our God and come to him humbly. The fact that we get to go to him, the fact that we have this relationship with him, that we would come and use it for political gain as if he cares so much about women because he said amen and a woman, not realizing that amen means so be it or may it be so. It has nothing to do with gender roles. It's the weirdest thing. It's the silliest thing. And it's absolutely blasphemous. This prayer was blasphemous from the pagan nonsense that he did. And by the way, he's not the first one. I think of Rick Warren going up there for the inauguration of Barack Obama and praying not only over and over again, using terminology that you find over and over again in the Quran, but then also calling Jesus Isa, calling Jesus Isa as if to relate to those from the Quran is absolutely ridiculous. And if you read of the Jesus of the Quran, it's not Yeshua HaMashiach. It is not Iusis in the scriptures. It is not the same person. This guy's just an argument. It's not a person. When I read the Gospels, Jesus is a person. You come to know him and know him and have life in his name. This stuff is grotesque and it's blasphemous to our God to pray in such a way. And It's something that hurts my heart to think about, but also the ignorance of it, whether joking or not. It reminded me of a clip, and we're going to play it here in a second. It reminded me of a clip that was from the movie Jurassic Park, and I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here and how Mr. Cleaver may have a lot in common with this uh, actress here. Let's play the clip. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. God creates man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaurs. Dinosaurs eat man. 
Woman inherits the earth. So <laughs> what we have there, okay, a couple things. First of all, there's kind of this Nietzschean uh, statement, you know, that man destroys God. And I, I think um, basically there is, you know, when it came to Nietzsche in his um, story, The Madman, and he talked about that we have we have killed God, you know, and we're and we're altogether miserable. Um, you know, I think he's kind of making trying to make that sort of reference, the Jeff Goldblum character there. Um, but you have her not understanding when he's saying making man <laughs> that man also includes women. In fact, this is Genesis 127 stuff. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Man is just simply speaking humankind, okay? So when man is eaten by the dinosaurs, no, women doesn't uh, doesn't take over the earth. And it's so the weirdest thing. But that is probably a joke, right? I hope when they wrote that script that that was a joke. But this guy is is, is doing that. And I find it not only appalling, blasphemous, but man, is it silly. It's silly, nonsensical, and ridiculous. And it just hurts my heart that this is the kind of stuff that's put forth. But I digress and I move over to our next subject as I know where the time is already getting to us. Um, But recently, rapper Lecrae has come out and he's made a number of statements recently, you know, and sometimes, you know, I've had guys that are fans of Lecrae's where they have, you know, hey, it looks like he's doing better now, right? When he first started, you know, I think he had, what, 116 records that had to do with Romans 116 being not ashamed of the gospel. And it seemed like, and and I'm just giving you, this is just me personally. I'm I'm not a rap guy. I don't listen to rap at all. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, it's just my, not my flavor of things. And and I understand the people that are like, hey, I, I think rap's wrong. There's like, it, it comes from a rebellious nature and so forth. I, I I understand convictions in that and so forth. But I'm not one to just say, oh, if somebody, you know, raps here with, with a beat and they're talking about Jesus and glorifying Jesus, that I completely write them off. I, I'm not that either. But it's just not my, you know, cup of tea, so to speak. But nonetheless, uh, Lecrae was huge. I mean, he was getting really, really big. And I remember... When we were throwing uh, our own concerts, he was like, dude, guys, you guys got to get Lecrae. He preaches the gospel. And it seemed like he was somebody, and I had watched videos of him, um, you know, going into churches. And it's, you know, kind of funny, you know, some of the churches that he had, would go into were, you know, some older folks that I'm sure were probably wondering what's going on when he's rapping and so forth. Um, but nonetheless, he, you know, a lot of times I've seen it where the lyrics, I, I've read them, I, not so much his, but of other artists where you, you see the lyrics. And if you just read the lyrics, you're like, wow, this is really doctrinal. This is really good. I think there's a huge movement of Calvinism, uh, so to say, typically when it comes to uh, the rap game there. But, um, but Lecrae, was somebody that seemingly was very, you know, wanted to get the gospel out, right? You know, really wanted to, to to share the gospel. And then it seemed like he waned from that and wasn't sharing it so much and it wasn't so evident, I, I would say, in his lyrics. But then it seemed like he wanted to be restored somewhat. Uh, then there was times where he said he he's getting away from white evangelicalism. You know, when I, I remember going to his Twitter and it took, I, I remember at the time, when that was going on, I would just read through, read through, read through, and I wouldn't see much in terms of somebody that I would consider an encouraging believer. And I was just kind of disappointed, you know, because I knew some younger guys who were really into his music and stuff. And so I was like, hey, guys, this is something I'm worried about, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then most recently, he had gotten into a little bit of debate with uh, kind of a conservative talking head, but she's a she's a, a Christian. I think uh, my wife's actually read one of her books, um, Ali Beth Stuckey, because Lecrae basically says, you know, he's pro-life from the womb to the tomb, right? And so what that actually is saying is not really from the womb, because we'll talk about why you can you can know a man by their fruit and also... Um, bad company corrupts good morals, especially when you're propagating that bad company to be more bad company. But I, I, I want to get into this because so often when it comes to the abortion issue, uh, what we have is somewhat of a bait and switch. Uh, actually, you know what? It's more of a red herring 
Because what happens is, is we'll be talking about the slaughter of babies in the womb. And what happens when a baby is slaughtered in the womb? Uh, they're either put with liquid gel, which is kind of going to uh, light them on fire, so to speak. Um, or they would be ripped limb from limb and then vacuumed out of their mother. And we're talking about a heinous, violent crime against an innocent baby. And so when we have this red herring that's thrown out, well, why don't you care about them after they're born? It is simply a talking point for people who want it legal to baby murder. It's the same thing that rape and incest and so forth are also simply talking points. They're not actually... Because if you ask a a pro-choice, and I don't even like to say choice, right? Because baby doesn't get to choose. Pro-baby murder. If you ask someone who's pro-baby murder, what it means, right? You know, what they're trying to grab after here, you know, when it comes to actually asking the question that they're saying, oh, rape and incest. Because if you simply ask them the question, okay, fine, let me grant you something. If rape and incest where therefore then there were allowed these abortions, would you say that all other abortions should be outlawed and considered murder? And I have never had a single one of those. I've never had one person who believes that baby murder should be legal tell me, well, yeah, if those are illegal, then the rest, or if those are illegal, then the rest can be illegal. It's not true. They're trying to use this, a violent crime committed against a woman by a man, and they're trying to punish the baby and murder that baby for the sin of that father. In fact, I was recently debating with someone because we had played the clip and I had planned on it, but we were were getting all over the place here today. And I had planned on playing it, but you had in Argentina, they voted through not only the Congress, but the Senate voted that babies can be murdered now, that they can murder babies in the womb up to 14 weeks. And you had, and and I had done a screen grab um, that I believe was on ABC News, because I couldn't do the ones that were on Twitter because it was a it was just a crazy party for them to be allowed to murder babies. I mean, that's really what it is. They're throwing this crazy party and you have them out in the streets, thousands of them singing and dancing. And many of the women were actually naked in those videos that were posted on Twitter. So I obviously wouldn't play that clip. But you see this and I could not get out of my head thinking and and watching these clips and seeing these these women dancing from high places and i could not help but think of the drums of moloch as they were getting ready to sacrifice their babies imagine throwing a party to have that right and imagine using these red herrings and these lies so that people can literally just continue to murder babies it is so heartbreaking and to use that as a talking point is disgusting. And when I watched Lecrae do that, I was so disappointed. I was so saddened. And he did the same thing. He did another interview with, I believe, Vlad TV. And he talked about homosexuality. And, you know, he was waffling at best, ridiculous at, at worst. But that was sad. And then now, guys, you have Lecrae campaigning for Raphael Warnock. Raphael Warnock, who's at the at the Georgia runoff, you have Lecrae coming out, not only in support, but this is they, these are some of the things he said at a campaign rally for him. He said, "Quote: We all have a very unique opportunity to continue making a difference in this city, continue making a difference in this country. Make sure you take your shackles off your feet." and walk to the polls to vote for Warnock. Somebody who literally tweeted out that he is a pro-choice pastor. This is disgusting. It is one thing to be ignorant of things and to not understand, and maybe somebody confused you, you thought, this is a good idea. It is another to campaign for someone specifically who brags about their pro-baby murder ways. That's exactly what Warnock has done. And Warnock himself is the current pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, and it's located in Atlanta. But I find this interesting. When he was the youth pastor 
of a church in New York in 1995, Fidel Castro actually visited his church, and the head pastor, Calvin Butts, said this of Fidel the murderous Castro, said this, we have one of the great leaders of the world with us today. And yes, Warnock was the youth pastor at that time. As someone who's worked in youth ministry for a number of years, I'm letting you know, I don't care, and Joe would obviously agree with me on this, if Joe, who which he would never do, welcomed in a murderous, rampaging lunatic and said these words, we have one of the great leaders of the world with us today, I would say right then, I am no longer <laughs> under your pastoral leadership because you, this is not sound, this is reprobation here. And this is the guy, Warnock, who is now a pastor, a pro-choice, pro-baby murder pastor. And this is who Lecrae is now campaigning for. And Lecrae has actually complained on his Twitter about a number of Christians not accepting him. He said, I was accepted, I wasn't accepted, then I was, and now I'm not again because of political leanings. And this is this is the 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 bait and switch here that that he is pulling off on so many people. And it's sad because I look at all the people coming and defending Lecrae for these actions and then propagating and retweeting tweets that say stuff like this. For the record, you don't have to be what evangelicalism slash the religious right says you have to be to love the Lord. Now, that is true. There are plenty that are in the religious right. There are plenty in so-called evangelicalism that say you need to believe these certain things and so forth. But when we are talking about the shedding of innocent blood, when we are talking about defending babies in the womb, when we are talking about that subject, I'm sorry, you need to be. I'm not talking about, oh, vote for this candidate, but I'm saying you're campaigning for somebody who not only was under the leadership at, in the pastoral ministry, under their youth pastor, of somebody who would accept Fidel Castro and welcome him in with open arms. We are talking about somebody who brags about about allowing women to murder babies. And this is what he has campaigned for. This is disgusting. But here he is. He says, I'm no leftist or Marxist. They fear me being and I'm not the right wing conservative. They demand I be. I'm a Christ follower. I'm sorry, but Christ does not stand arm in arm with murderous people. I'm sorry. It's just not true. Remember that David was called a murderer. Not because he literally killed Moriah the Hittite, but because he put him in a position in which he was going to die. He was, God judged him for that. He had to, he repented it, Psalm 51. And I pray for Raphael. I pray for Lecrae's repentance. Because I'm sorry, this is why you have Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, quoting Epimendes, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. The fact that you, the company that you keep, the people that you are with, the people that you're telling people to vote for this guy to make sure that in Atlanta we can murder babies. How disgusting is that? That he would support this and it's worse yet that you would vote for someone like this. But then to come out and campaign on their behalf, how disgusting. A false teacher. I'm sorry, Raphael Warnock is a false teacher. If you can't shepherd and keep wolves from murdering the youngest and the babies in the womb, those little sheep, if you can't even shepherd that, you are no shepherd at all. This is grotesque. It's disgusting. It's heartbreaking. And I want to point this out because I've seen so many, sadly, because I believe Twitter and TikTok and all these, you know, you know, these these young people talking on there about I'm not a single issue voter. And I'll bring this up 100 times out of 100. The fact is, is if you agreed with Fidel Castro or Adolf Hitler on 99% of things, but when, you know, you look behind you, yeah, the furnaces are burning the Jews in the back, but I'm not a single voter issue guy, you know? I don't care about this single issue. Look what he's going to do for our economy. Who cares that he calls Jews worms and so forth and parasites? Who cares? That's just one little thing. Here he is, single voter issue. If you cannot get that issue right... You should probably go repent and turn back to Jesus Christ. This is Chad Davidson, and this is the 511 News. 
The 511 News with Chad Davidson has been brought to you by Good Fight Ministries, bringing you news and commentary from a Christian perspective. This show can be heard every Friday wherever podcast shows are available or visit 511news.org. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to being with you next week on the 511 News.